what's happening guys today we're going to start building the bud tube amp stick around the tube amp cometh so i just wanted to show you the packing quite substantial tons and tons of packing individual boxes each with lots of packing in there they took good care when they put this together there's the chassis with all the little components in it there is uh, the power amp or the power transformer the output transformer the circuit board the two tubes and there is the uh, the box that I have just glued together so it will be ready when the amp is complete so on to building the amp all right let's start unpacking we got the circuit board and a bag of components this is the chassis we can move that out of the way for now We got our tube sockets. There is a silver mica 10 picofarad capacitor. Strain relief. Uh, indicator light. More capacitors. 0.22 630 volt. I'm going to start mulling these. There's our fuse holder, another capacitor, a piece of yellow wire, capacitor, going be a lot of capacitors, right? 22 farad? 22 microfarad. 22 farad would be huge. We got some fuses, some standoffs, some knobs, a very nice switchcraft uh, quarter inch mono plug, switchcraft quarter inch mono socket. Quarter inch jack, switch, various and sundry resistors, some hardware, more resistors. There are our diodes, one in four thousand seven, more resistors. Caps, pots, caps, wire, wire, hardware, aluminum insulating tape. That's very nice to have. Rubber grommets for the chassis, screws, hardware. Grommets, hardware, heat shrink, hardware, 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 hardware. All right. So it looks like we got all our pieces. Let's take a look at the circuit board and see if she, uh, is marked with values no marked with numbers so I guess I'm going to have to uh, get their their uh, their layout for this their population chart all right be back in a few 
All right, according to the instructions, we're to start with our tube sockets. These are Belton nine pin sockets. I don't know much about tubes, so we can only assume that they are good sockets, right? Put them in there like so. And then we will begin to solder them. And for today's soldering, we're going to be using the El Cheapo Vellum and Soldering Iron VT SS5 Uniform that we reviewed a couple weeks ago. Should be fine. We'll be using the Wizotech solder wire. This is a uh, 6040.8 millimeter diameter. So let's go start by cleaning my iron. putting the tip in a little flux just to make sure we're gotten good and clean then we'll uh, put some solder on it to tin it up and we'll wipe it off once again now our tip is good and clean and we'll use proper soldering technique which is to apply just a very small amount of solder to the tip for thermal transfer and then we'll apply the iron to the pad and to the leg at the same time let them heat up apply a good amount of solder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down and let it cool there for a minute I'm going to do the same thing over here to one of these Let that cool for a second. Then I want to make sure my boards are, or my sockets are looking nice and even there. And they are. And they also recommend that you make sure you have solder coming all the way through the plated holes, which I do. So now we're going to solder these sockets. I'm glad I got this before we end up in a full lockdown mode here. Gives me something to work on over the next few days. There have been no reports of the uh, anybody positive for the virus in my county. However, in all the surrounding counties there have. So chances are better than not that the virus is here and we just don't know about it yet it's March 19th as I'm recording this we should know more in a few days again I'm using a generous amount of solder here because as they say in the instruction sheets we want to make sure that we have solder on both sides of the pins and we do so the Ohio governor does seem to be uh, doing everything he can to slow the spread of the virus and you know, nothing's gonna stop it We'll just have to see what happens and, you know, hope we all make it through this alive. It's frightening for me with a heart condition, but even more frightening is my mother is uh, just about to turn 80 years old and she suffers from both type 2 diabetes 
and leukemia. I'm afraid she definitely wouldn't survive if she got the virus, so we're being very careful with her. She is not going outside of the home, and I'm just bringing things to her while being very careful myself. And yes, we have solder all the way through the holes. So that's good. Okay, next on the to-do list is the input jack. Um, I generally would be soldering resistors first, diodes, smaller components, but hey, I'm going to follow the directions. Whoopsies. And, uh, I mean, that's how you get the best results, right? By following the directions. Okay, after all that tube soldering, or tube socket soldering, I'm going to clean and retin my iron. So we're always working with a nice clean tip. Once again, a generous amount of solder. And I like to do things like this on opposite corners. Help spread out the heat just a little bit. And again, I just want to check, make sure that I can see solder coming through the holes and I do. So now we move on to the smaller components and I have the population sheet downloaded from their website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all of the individual bags first. I've gone over the population chart and I've marked each of the resistor bags with, with the resistor or multiple resistors that they have in them. So next I'm just going to solder in some resistors. You don't really have to watch me do that, do you? I didn't think so. Okay, before I solder in the resistors, there is one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, Tube Depot recommends that you space out the resistors from the board by using a piece of paper folded four times. So that's what we're doing here. Alrighty. Once again, we just want to make sure that we have solder coming through the holes and we don't have any blobs like that. So to take care of that, I'm just going to reflow it. Oh, come off. Alright. There we go. Now do we have a blob on the bottom? No. So we're pretty good there. All right, we've got all of the resistors soldered in place. And as you can see, I took care to make sure that they are all spaced relatively evenly above the PC and that we have solder on both sides of the breadboard. And for those of you with OCD, I have made sure that the tolerance bands on all the resistors point in the same direction with the board facing up. Horizontal resistors tolerance bands point to the right. Vertical resistor tolerance bands point towards the bottom. Wasn't that nice of me? I know. I'm a nice guy. Okay, so we did resistors. Now we must do capacitors and diodes, although I'm not too worried about the diodes. All right, I'm going to mark off the capacitors and we will solder them up next. What fun! Okay, so how many of you were yelling at your uh, computer screens that, hey, Paul, you dumbass, you soldered the uh, tubes to the wrong side of the board? Yeah. I know. Well, I didn't know until just now. 
luckily, luckily I say, I was able to cut them off and hopefully I'll be able to make a last minute save here. We'll see. Alright, let's see what we can do. Mostly there. That one is sort of there. Yeah, I know. I'm a dumbass. I can't believe I did it either. All right, I'm going to try and see if I can get these soldered on place, and then we'll uh, come back. All right, I got them soldered on here. I use lots of solder for a good connection, so there shouldn't be a problem. As long as everything lines up. I will try and get them in there just a little bit better. See if I can't scooch them over a little bit. But anyway, all the resistors and capacitors are in there. and That's where I'm going to quit for today, boys and girls. Best to just walk away sometimes. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this first part. Even though this is the second video, this is the first part of our build of the Bud tube amp. In part three, we will put in the wires along with the power transformer, the output transformer, uh, the switch, you know. We'll put the chassis all together and we should be ready to go. All right, stay safe, wash your hands. That's it, I'm out, peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.